اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Necessary Condition Analysis Using Smart PLS4 In this session, we are going to focus on how to use Necessary Condition Analysis in Smart PLS4. The session introduces the combined use of partial least squares, Structural Equation Modeling PLS-SCM and Necessary Condition Analysis. The use of PLS-SCM and NCA enables researchers to identify the must-have, that is, necessary factors required for an outcome in accordance with the necessity logic. Now, at the same time, this approach shows the should have, that is, sufficient factors that follows the additive sufficiency logic. Now, what is the difference between the two? We are going to talk about this later in this session. So, we have come across two terms. The first one is sufficient and the other one is necessary. So, what is a necessary condition and what is a sufficient condition? Now, necessary condition is something that must be present for a particular outcome to occur. Now, if you want to achieve an outcome, there are certain factors that must be there. Otherwise, you cannot achieve that particular outcome. Now, those factors, those conditions are called necessary conditions. Now, what is a sufficient condition? Now, this is something that if present guarantees the occurrence of a particular outcome. However, the outcome can still occur even if this condition is not present. Now, let's consider a test. Necessary condition. So, what is the necessary condition for passing a test? Studying is a necessary condition for passing a test. You cannot pass a test if you don't study. You won't pass the test. However, just because you studied doesn't guarantee you will pass. Other factors like understanding the materials also play a role. Now, what is a sufficient condition in this case? Getting every question correct is a sufficient condition for passing a test. If you answer every question correctly, you will pass the test. However, you could still pass the test even if you don't get every question right, but if you meet the passing threshold. So the sufficient condition is that you'd get some questions right. The necessary condition is in order to get those questions right, you need to study. In order to pass the test, you need to study. So studying is a necessary condition. Now, another example. For information systems to be effective in organization, they must be used. They cannot be effective if they are not used. Hence, usage is a necessary condition for systems to contribute to the success of those systems. However, usage alone may not be sufficient since there are other requirements as well, such as correct use and organizational workflows could also play a role in information system effectiveness. Hence, there are must have and should have factors. Necessary condition are or necessary factors are must have factors. Sufficient factors, sufficient conditions are should have factors. The existence of both necessary conditions or must have factors and sufficient conditions that is should, should have factors is common in many fields of research. Just remember, if your outcome cannot occur without a particular condition, then that is a necessary condition. Now, if your outcome can occur in the presence or absence of a condition, that is called a sufficient condition. So, the difference is must have and should have. Now, in several fields of management research, partial least squares of structural equation modeling or PLSSCM has become a standard multivariate data analysis technique to investigate causal predictive relationship. Now, this method empirically substantiates the determinants X that lead to an outcome Y. Now, authors who interpret their PLSSCM findings normally use expressions such as X increases Y or a higher X leads to higher Y. Now, this interpretation of x leading to y 
or an in a higher value of x leads to a higher value of y now normally follows sufficiency logic now while according to the sufficiency logic a determinant that is let's say enjoyment is sufficient to produce the outcome that is use of technology so we use technology because we are enjoying it it may not be necessary for the use of technology that we have to enjoy it the absence of enjoyment could be compensated by other determinants for example role of technology in career growth now enjoyment is not a necessary condition for the use of technology we can still use technology even though we are not enjoying it it could be that the technology or that particular technology that we intend to use is playing a role in our career growth by contrast necessity logic implies that an outcome or certain level of outcome can only be achieved must have if the necessary cause is in place or is at a certain level to express this necessity what researchers do is that researchers refer to expressions such as x is needed for y x is a precondition for y x is required for y or y requires x accordingly the necessary condition being a constraint a requirement a bottleneck a critical factors now these terminologies you will see in papers on pls scm and nca they must be satisfied to achieve the certain outcome now other factors cannot compensate in a situation where a necessary condition is not satisfied in sufficiency in sufficiency logic other factors can compensate as we saw earlier the role of that technology in career growth in necessary factors those other factors cannot compensate for x which is necessary for y now some fundamentals of necessity logic and nca NCA does not impose specific requirements on data or measurement other than the standards requirements in empirical study so whatever requirements that there are for PLS SCM analysis you will follow those same particular guidelines now to test those necessities in the SCM context an SC an NCA needs to be done on the scores that we call latent variable scores we will see that later NCS focus is other than in the typical PLS SCM estimation on single conditions that are necessary for outcome so each condition is assessed separately so what what it means is that NCA is a bivariate technique if more than one necessary condition is analyzed this is called multiple NCA or multiple bivariate NCA so one particular condition is it required for the outcome now it has nothing to do with the other condition so it is how how does it interpret now the necessity association found between a condition x1 and y in a multiple bivariate nca does not depend on other conditions in the estimate that is let's say i add apart from x1 that is which i want to test whether it is a requirement or necessity for y i can add x2 let's say whether x2 is required for y as well now when i add x2 to the model this does not change the estimated association of x1 on y now that is something common when we use regression analysis now pls scm or scm is based on regression so it might so happen that when you add x2 x1 becomes insignificant now here in case of nca the relationship of x1 with the outcome does not change when you add x2 to the model now there are other important fundamentals related to necessity logic and nca now one thing that you will commonly see is this a graph and you we will see it commonly in paper ex, papers explaining nca in pls scm or the papers that focus on using nca now what it does is nca reveals areas in scatter plot of the dependent and independent variables that denote the presence of a necessary conditions now what happens is in this particular graph what you have got is you've got a scatter plot of the dependent and independent variable and this denotes the presence of necessary conditions 
Now, while PLS SCM establishes a linear function, NCA covers a ceiling line or on top of the data. Now, this is your ceiling line here. Now, what this ceiling line does is it separates the area with observations, that is this area here, the area below the line. The larger the empty area is relative to the total area. So, the larger this area is relative to this area, the larger the constraint that X puts on Y. So, if you've got more empty area here and you've got all these under this ceiling line and this area is relative like increased in size relative to this area under the ceiling line the larger is the constraint on x or the larger is the constraint that x puts on y in such cases x is a is an important precondition for y if you've got this area that is more white space, more empty space here. Now, there are commonly two default ceiling lines. One is the ceiling envelopment free disposable hull line, CEFDH. Now, look at this, this stepwise line here, the staircase, stepwise linear line is your CEFDH line. Now, this line here is Another is the ceiling regression free disposable hull line, CRFDH, which is simple linear regression line that is going through the data points here, this one, this straight line. So this is your CRFDH and this stepwise is your CEFDH. Now, which one will we use? We are going to talk about this later as well, but CEFDH, that is ceiling envelopment, free disposable hull line CEFTH is recommended for discrete data. Now CRFTH is recommended for continuous data. Moving on. Now this chart here before we move on, this chart here will be provided by Smart PLS. So you do not have to use any other software to draw these charts. But the interpretation becomes easier if we look at the bottleneck tables that are going to or we are going to assess them later in this session. Now again, at the same chart, this is how the chart looks in Smart PLS. Now the ceiling line here, this line here, now look at the white area, it's quite high. So this means that this particular X is putting a lot of constraint on Y. So X is a necessary condition for Y, as, it's, as I can see from this particular chart. Now, the ceiling line specifies the minimum level of X that is necessary to achieve the certain level of Y. Now, this ceiling line here can express or tell us that X or what level of X is required to achieve Y. To grasp this concept, now let's consider this figure, which shows an example of NCA ceiling line chart from Smart PLS output. Now, look at this. The independent variable X must have at least level of three. So in order to achieve a certain level of Y, let's say the level here four, look at this line here, four, you must have X at three. So if I want to achieve level of four for my outcome, I need my X to be at least at three. So this is how you can interpret this chart. But does this mean that X is absolutely necessary for Y? What's the effect size? Is it significant or not? All these questions will be answered later. Now, that chart can be presented in this form of bottleneck table that can tell us, guide us, whether X is a necessary condition for Y. And what level of y can be achieved at the level of x so what is the level of x so that you can achieve y a bottleneck table is another way to illustrate the nca results in such table the first column here it is these two can be referred to as the first columns because this is y in percentage and this is y in actual values 
shows the outcome. These are the two outcomes or rather the outcomes in two different formats. While well, the next column represents and any additional column represents the conditions that is x here. These are the conditions that must be satisfied to achieve the outcome that is y. Now the conditions represent the necessary levels of the independent variables for the outcome. Now look at this. These are the necessary levels to achieve this level of outcome. Now let's say if I want to achieve 50% of the outcome that is 4, level 4 is that level 4 is 50% of the outcome I need my x to be at least at 3. Now what does this mean? We are going to come to that later. So if, got, if I've got 1x, 1y, what is the level of x that I need to achieve at least 50% of my outcome? That 50% in actual values is 4. So I need my x to be at 3. Now what does this nn indicates? N, N means not a necessary condition. Now, in order to achieve 1, 1 1.6, 2.2, 2.8 level of the outcome, that is 30%, you do not need any X. So, X is not a necessary condition up until 30% of Y or 2.8 of Y in actual values. Now, it also lists the percentages here, which we have explained that the first column lists the percentage ranges from the for the outcome. It expresses the values of Y in percentages of their ranges, in which 0 is the lowest level or lowest observed value and 100 is the highest observed value. Now, for instance, again, we have already mentioned, if you want to achieve 50% of the outcome, you need your X to be at this particular level. Now, let's say I want to achieve 100% of the outcome, so I need my x to be at least 5.5. Moving on. Now, in addition to these other columns, table x in counts the fourth column in percentiles in the fifth column. So, this is x in counts, x in percentiles. Now, what does this mean? Displaying x in the bottleneck table in the form of counts focuses on the number of cases, that is, the observations that do not meet the necessary level of x to x accomplish the certain level of y. So, for instance, when considering an outcome level of 5.2, where is 5.2? Here it is, 5.2, 70%. You need your x to be at least 4.5. And in this case, we find that 20%, or sorry, 20 cases do not achieve the necessary level of x. Here it is. So when achieving or when trying to achieve 5.2, your x is at 4.5 and the data that this particular example uses, 20 cases do not achieve the necessary level of x. That is a level of x of at least 4.5 to accomplish y's desired level of outcome 5.2. In that case, 20% or so rather, 20 cases do not or fail to achieve the level. Now, similarly, what does percentile means in this case? Now, the percentile option displays the percentage of cases that do not meet the necessary level of X to accomplish a certain level of Y. Now, I'm going to take the same example here. We see that, for instance, that 20 cases that did not achieve the level of 4.5 here, 20 cases did not achieve this level of 4.5, they correspond to 33.3% of all cases. So this example, this table has been taken from a paper and I'll share the paper as well. The description will have the reference for it. So in this example, 33.3% of all the cases failed to achieve the level of 4.5 that was necessary for this 5.2 value of y. So this is how you interpret the x in counts and x in percentiles. Now, as I identified earlier, we have to have the effect size. How necessary, like let's say, if something is necessary, what's its effect size? Now that is referred to as d and its significance which indicate whether a variable or a construct is a necessity condition or a necessary condition. 
The value of D is calculated by dividing the area without observations that is above the ceiling line by the total area that contains or could contain observation that is scope as per the boundaries outlined by the minimum and maximum theoretical or empirical values of x and y. You do not need to calculate it. It will be provided by Smart PLS, just so you know how it is calculated. Thus, by definition, D ranges from 0 to 1, where higher value means higher effect or large effect, and low means low effect. So, something between 0 to 0 0.1 is a small effect, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 medium, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 large effect, and over 0 0.5 is very large effect. Now, previous studies have used the threshold of 0 0.1 to accept the necessity hypothesis. Thus, an effect size of 0 0.1 and higher is required to consider a variable unnecessary condition. However, the absolute magnitude of D only indicates the meaningfulness of the effect size from a practical perspective. Now, accordingly, researchers should also evaluate the statistical significance, the p-value, whether that effect size is significant or not. And if it is, then necessity hypothesis is substantiated. Now, two key parameters or NCA parameters are the ceiling accuracy and necessity effect size. Now, we have had a look at the effect size. So, what is ceiling accuracy? The ceiling accuracy represents the number of observations that are on or below the ceiling line divided by the total number of observations multiplied by 100. Now, while the accuracy of CEFDH by definition is 100%, the accuracy of other lines, that is CRFDH, can be less than 100%. Now, there is no specific rule for acceptable level of accuracy. However, there is a benchmark value that is 95% that can assist the, to assess the quality of the solution generated. So, we've got the effect size and then we've got the ceiling accuracy, how accuracy or how accurate is your ceiling line or how accurate is your ceiling. Now, in that case, we've got ceiling accuracy. So, we can use the benchmark 95%. Now, for CEFDH, it is by default 100%. You cannot change it. It is by definition. So, it's more or less meaningless. For CRFDH, it is less than 100%. And most of the time, it is because it is the continuous data or it is for the continuous data. Now, here are the steps for NCA. Now, the steps remain the same as you do your measurement or structural model. So what you have done previously, you have to obviously have your research background objectives, prepare the data, clean it, put it in Smart PLS, assess the measurement model. Everything remains the same. What we have done previously, there are videos on the channel to do all these steps. Once you have assessed the measurement model, then comes into play the necessary condition analysis. Now, let's suppose we have done all these steps and all these steps are totally done, complete. The next step is now we are going to perform the necessary condition analysis. So, what is the step or step five? Now, step five is to generate the scores or extract the scores. Now, in our example, what we have done is we have got a Likert scale from one to seven with one meaning low ratings for all the indicators. Now, in our case, all indicators are measured on the same scale. The interpretation of the unstandardized latent variable scores is straightforward, which would not be the case if differently scaled indicators were used. Now, if you have used differently scaled indicators, then use standardized. Otherwise, use unstandardized latent variable scores for NCA. Now, both Standardized and unstandardized latent variable score will produce the same NCA parameters. However, the bottleneck levels will differ owing to different scales that are involved. However, with unstandardized, the interpretation is easier if you have used the same scales. Now, one important thing, the NCA or the NCAs are performed individually for different outcome variables. Now, if you've got multiple outcome variables, you need to do multiple NCA analysis that is separate for each DV or dependent variable. 
Now per default the table always present both the effect sizes. Okay, now let's do uh, NC analysis. Let's start the NC, NC analysis and as we do we are going to read these slides along with our results. So how do I start doing it? Let's go to Smart PLS. Now I've got this model here. Now let's suppose this is the model that I'm interested in testing my organizational performance based on these seven predictors. Now again the previous steps or the preliminary steps I've collected the data, I've put it in a software, I've cleaned the data, then I imported the data into Smart PLS. Now I will assess it for measurement model. For now let's use the standardized start calculation. Now I have assessed the outer loadings. I have assessed the reliability and validity. Everything fine. I have reported my reliability and validity. Now once this is done, now I am going to go for necessary condition analysis. So how do I start? Let's go to calculate PLS SCM algorithm. Since I have used these scales that are same for all the constructs in the study and this is discrete data one meaning low rating or strongly disagree seven meaning strongly agree now i'm going to use unstandardized type of results so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press start now latent variable scores now these are the scores that i'm going to use for my necessary condition analysis. So what I'm going to do is these are unstandardized scores. So I'm going to create the data file. I do not need the manifest variables. I just need the latent variable scores. That is these scores for my necessary condition analysis, nothing else. And I'm going to call it, let's say, unstandardized and create. Now the data file is created. Let's go back. Let's go back. Here is my data file that is created. Now how do I do necessary condition analysis? Make sure your project is selected. You can click here or you can just simply right click on your model and do or, or rather your project and do new regression model. And let me call it NCA, necessary condition analysis in my first model in, and that is regression. And let's save it. Now, what is my outcome? Here is my outcome, organizational performance. Why? That is my why. Here it is. Now you can put the intercept wherever you want. Let's say it is here. Now I've got my seven conditions that I want to assess whether they are necessary or not. So I'm going to drag them and drop them onto my dependent variable. Here it is. Let's bring them here and here it is. Now in order to run the necessary condition analysis what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here calculate. You can run regression analysis here as well but that is not the something that we are interested in this particular session. Necessary condition analysis. Click here. Now we are going to use the defaults although you can change these as well. Now this Actually, what it does is it changes the percentages in the outcome or the, bout, uh, the bottleneck table. For now, we are going to keep it as 10 and click make sure that open report is checked and press start. Now, here is your ceiling line effect size overview. So what is the effect size here? Here it is. Well, it is a necessary condition. It is a necessary condition. Well, this is doesn't look like a necessary condition. This one is a necessary condition. Doesn't look like a necessary condition. And same is the case. So this one might be a necessary condition as well. Now, I'm not using CRFDH because my data is a discrete data. The original scale on which I collected my data was discrete. 1 to 7. So I'm going to use ceiling envelopment full disposable hull line. This one here. Now, is this significant? How would I know if this is significant or not? Which ones are significant and which ones are not significant? 
We are going to come back to this, but let's go back to the theory for some time again. For default, the table always presents both effect sizes for this and which we saw earlier. To support the decision on the ceiling line to choose, we can evaluate the ceiling accuracy. Now you can evaluate the ceiling accuracy or you can look at your data. What was it? Continuous or discrete? In this case, I'm looking at my discrete data. Now there is no specific rule according to or for the acceptable level of accuracy as we have read earlier. The benchmark currently is 95%. Now what happens is you've got here both these now where is your accuracy we haven't seen the accuracy here yet here is the accuracy now this is the accuracy for ceiling envelopment and this is the accuracy for cr now this is quite high as well but in this case i'm going for cefdh reason being my discrete data now is there much difference in between the two well you can see not much at times there is slightly but overall, you can say more or less, they are same. Now in this case, look at this, this is the effect size, observations above ceiling line, accuracy, 100%. Here you've got 2, 5, 3, 6, 1, 1, 3 observations above the ceiling line. Now moving on, in this case, we are using CEFDH here as per these instructions as well. We find information on ceiling accuracy. We have already seen this. Now this reports or the report indicates the lowest ceiling accuracy for CRFDH ceiling line in our example is 98.240 for reliability. Where is it? Here it is. 98.240. Where is it? Here it is. For reliability. This is the ceiling accuracy. It has six observations on or above the ceiling line, which the information was already in the table, meaning that the remaining 335 of the total 341 observations, so I had a total sample size of 341, and they are within the ceiling line. This means the accuracy is 98.240. Even the accuracy is above 95%, we still use CEFDH as the data is discrete. Since Likert scale is based on discrete values, the transformation to the latent variable does not change the characteristic of the input scale. Hence, we are going to go for CEFDH. Now, the magnitudes of effect size, we have already seen that they are, some of them are over 0.1, some of them are less than 0.1. Now, are they significant? How would I know? To do so, what we are going to do is we are going to come back here go back you do not get to see the significance if you run just the necessary condition analysis you need to run nca permutations now the required is 10000 permutations nothing else just press start make sure open report is selected start now here it is for cefdh look at this is it significant yes Significant, yes. Significant, yes. Yes, no. Assurance is not a necessary condition, is not a significant necessary condition. Whereas these two again are significant and necessary conditions for the outcome to occur. This is how you get the p values for your effect size. Moving on, next. While these outputs, we have generated the core parameters for the later interpretation. The bottleneck tables are useful to assess the bottleneck tables or to access the bottleneck tables. What we need to do is we need to go back to NCA. Now, this actually does tell us that your effect sizes are significant or not. Now, we need to understand the level of outcome that we want to achieve and how or what will be the value of X in order to achieve that outcome. So for that, we need our bottleneck tables. Where are the bottleneck tables? Again, NCA or here is necessary condition analysis results. And I'm going to open the report. And where are my bottleneck tables? Now look at the corner tables here. So the level of X to achieve the level of Y. Here it is. It's for each of your predictors. 
So it's a bivariate technique. So to achieve the level of seven for my organizational performance, I need my responsiveness to be at least 2.638. If you look at here, this one, 2.638 is the same as what we saw in the corner tables. Now, what does this bottleneck table mean? Now, look at this vision. In order to achieve the level one of organizational performance, none of them are necessary. Now, they are not necessary up until here. There is no condition that is necessary up until 30% of organizational performance. Now, if you want to achieve 40% of organizational performance, that is OP at the level of 3.4 only one of them is a necessary condition all others are not necessary now if you want to achieve 50 percent only two are necessary this one and this one here now if you want to achieve 60 percent that is 4.6 organizational performance level of organizational performance these fours are necessary conditions these two are not required now, if you want to achieve 100 percent of your organizational performance that is level seven you need your vision to be at this level your development to be at this level your rewards to be at this level your reliability to be at this level your assurance to be at this level your empathy to be at this level and your responsiveness to be at be at least at this level so this is how you interpret your bottleneck tables now this is or these are the values now these are the next one is counts now, 15% of the cases failed in this case, as we explained earlier. And this is the percentiles as explained earlier. Now, 4.39% of the cases failed to achieve this level of outcome. And this actually represented 15, per 15 cases. Now, moving on. Now, by clicking counts or percentiles, the bottleneck table shows the number or percentage of cases that do not meet the necessary levels of the antecedents. So here in counts, 15, 15 cases, sorry, 15 cases do not meet the necessary level. What is it in percentages? It is 4.399, 7.31331, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0
Now, for a structural relationship, you again, you simply run the bootstrapping technique. And for VIF, obviously, you will get it from PLS SCM. The R square, PLS SCM. For PLS predict, there is a separate analysis that you can do if you go to calculate okay now not not here pls predict won't run here you have to have your full model so there is a video on the channel that will be shared in the description now once the structure model is done once you have reported all these the next step is you go for your necessary condition analysis now we need these structural relationships in our reporting of results as well so let's get the results here is my model now go to calculate to get vif values or r square values you can run pls scm algorithm to get significance values we are going to run the bootstrapping technique let's do standardized 10000 all good let's start Now here are our results, go to path coefficients and here are the results. Now I'm not interested in all of them. I'm just interested in the impact of those seven conditions on organizational performance. So you can copy it to Excel. Now here I've got a sample here, but let me create one for you. Paste it. Now I'm not interested in this one here. I am interested in this one because this is the impact of vision on OP. So delete all else apart from those factors affecting OP. Delete. All good. Yes, I'm not interested in this. Let's put this one away. Here it is. Now I've got these beta coefficients and whether they are significant or not. Select them, right click, format cells, number three, okay. Let's save it. Now that I've got these results, I need my effect size and whether that effect size is statistically significant or not. Now, the next step, let's get those, go back, back, NCA, calculate, NCA permutations, all good, start. Now here are the effect sizes and the permutation p-values, let's copy them to Excel, paste it. Don't need this column for now. Right click, format cells, number, three decimal points, okay. Now, vision here, vision here, development here, development here. Rewards, rewards. So you see that these factors are in line, assurance, empathy, responsiveness, responsiveness, this is all good. Now here is the table where we can compare the results as well. And why we need this table, I'm just going to guide you on that as well. Now the bottleneck tables, apart from this, that are generated provide relevant levels of these antecedent constructs that are necessary to achieve the specific outcomes. Now, you are going to use those bottleneck tables that we saw earlier. Here are the from necessary condition analysis. All good, start. Here they are, CEFTH bottleneck tables. This one, this table. This will tell you the level of outcome that can be achieved based on these conditions and whether or not they are necessary or not. So you are going to present this table in your analysis results as well. Now, how do we interpret this find, find, these findings? Now, there is a general template. This is so what if your exogenous construct is significant here in PLS SCM results and it is a necessary condition? Look at this. It is significant and is it a necessary condition? Yes, it is. So how do I interpret this? 
To do so, I've got this template here. Now, what does this mean? On average, an increase in the exogenous variable. What is my exogenous variable here? Vision. So, on average, an increase in vision will increase the outcome, that is, the performance. However, a certain level of where is my bottleneck table for vision? Look at this here. A certain level of vision, here it is. is necessary for the outcome to manifest. Now, in order for outcome to be manifest, to be observed, you need a certain level of vision. Now, what happens if your predictor is significant, but it is not a necessary condition? Look at this. In this case, we do not have that. But what if that, that happens to you? This means that an increase in the exogenous construct will increase the outcome. However, no minimum level of the construct is needed to ensure the outcome because it is not a necessary condition. So there could be other scenarios as well. Now what I have done is, before I move on to that, let me explain these bottleneck table once briefly. Now this is the bottleneck table. Let's say I want to achieve 80% of organizational performance not loyalty that's a typo your vision must be at least 2.150 which we have explained earlier the development must be at this level the rewards must be at this level so this is how you explain your bottleneck tables which we have already done now we have done percentiles as well increasing the percentile offers further insights we see that for instance for 4.3 99% that is 15% of the cases did not achieve the required understanding of vision for a 80% of performance for 80% of performance 4.399% of the cases this amounts to 15 cases did not achieve the understanding of the vision now what I've done is I've used this table here the results table along with this table here and I have created this table here. And you can see this table here as well in the scenarios. So what happens is my, these are the scenarios. I've got four scenarios here. Exogenous construct is a significant determinant. So I've got which ones are significant. This one is significant. This one is significant. This one is significant. So I've got three significant here. And I've mentioned those three here, vision, development, and responsiveness. And are they necessary conditions? Let's see. Yes, this one is necessary. Yes, this one is necessary. And yes, this one is necessary as well. So these three are significant and necessary as well. So I've put them here. So both have to be significant and necessary. So you will put only those predictors that are both necessary and significant. What's the conclusion? On average, an increase in the exogenous construct will increase the outcome. However, a certain level, that is the C and CA bottleneck tables, of the exogenous construct is necessary. So if you look at your bottleneck tables, there is a certain level of vision that is required for your organizational performance. So what is that level? If I want to achieve 80% of my organizational performance, I will need vision. I cannot achieve 80% of my performance if I do not have a vision. Moving on. So how do I interpret based on the example? On average, an increase in the vision, development and rewards will increase the performance. Also, to achieve performance, there needs to be certain minimum level of understanding of vision, focus on development and responsiveness in employees. Otherwise, you cannot achieve a certain level of performance. Now, there is another scenario. Your PLS SCM results are significant, but it is not a necessary condition. Is that case, is that a case in your results where your PLS SCM are significant and it is not a necessary condition? So I've got three significant here and all three are necessary as well. So that is not applicable in my case. So I've got, look at this, significant determinant, but not a necessary condition. These are significant and are necessary conditions so there is nothing on the second level here what if i've got non-significant determinant but a significant or unnecessary condition 
So I've got a non-significant determinant here, but it is a necessary condition. Non-significant, a necessary condition. Not significant, a necessary condition. So I've got three here. OP rewards, reliability and empathy. Rewards, reliability and empathy. Their D value and their P value from permutations and how do you interpret it? A certain level, that is you have to see the bottleneck tables of the exogenous construct is necessary for the outcome to manifest. A further increase is not recommended since it will not increase the outcome any further. So you need to achieve a minimum level of the predictors. Increasing it further will not help you in increasing the outcome. To attain organizational performance, there needs to be to have a certain minimum level of rewards, reliability and empathy. A further increase of rewards, reliability and empathy in the organization will on average not further increase the organizational performance. So you need the bare minimum level of those factors to achieve the outcome. Further increasing those conditions will not help in achieving organizational performance. And finally, when your PLSSCM results are insignificant and it is not a necessary condition, that is the case with assurance. Where is it? Look at this assurance. Insignificant, insignificant. So it is neither significant nor a necessary condition. Assurance is neither a must have or a should have factor for the improved organizational performance. So this is how you can present your results to the reader in your paper along with the bottleneck tables. Now, this was all about necessary condition analysis, how to run it, how to interpret it. Now, here are a few very good papers. The references will be shared in the description. Um, they are must read in order to understand PLSS, SCM and NCA. This one, a more latest one. This is from a book, a chapter 10 from the book, How to Apply a Necessary Condition Analysis in PLSSCM. Now, there are some other papers that have applied PLSSCM with NCA. You can easily find these papers. I hope uh, this particular session would have helped you understand how to use necessary condition analysis with PLSSCM. Thank you very much.